Hey, how's it guys? It's Donzia. So it has been a fantastic week, a fantastic few days, especially on the symbol gold and on many other symbols like the stocks, the futures, the cryptos, and some of the Forex pairs are starting to pick up, but mostly gold. It's been beautiful. There have been explosive moves that happen on Thursday and Friday, which is why this is called explosive moves. And the clouds of liquidity on repeat because the same concepts, um, the same concepts keep repeating itself over and over again. As you can see in front of you, this is the sentiment outlook. You should know what this is by now if you've been watching this, or if you've been watching my channel. You should know by now that this is obviously the institutional sentiment viewer, which gauges a overall schematic of what a instrument is doing over a long period of time. This is obviously the intraday, as the intraday is about 88% bullish on Friday. This is when I had taken that screenshot, and this is obviously the daily, which is on a longer-term basis. So gold has been bullish forever, especially, specifically this year when it comes to trading lower time frames. It has been bullish from about the 20th of February this year. It has continuously made all-time highs and it has broken those all-time highs and simultaneously down here as you can see with the my fx book sentiment viewer where retail traders obviously this is only 18 percent of the traders that are registered or have logged in on the my fx book so this doesn't represent every single trader in the world obviously but this does influence people to have a school of thought of going short or selling this instrument or this symbol gold when it has proven to go long for months now in fact even years but over the shorter period of time since most traders are trading lower time frames most traders are looking for opportunities to go short and take those shorts to points where price action has not returned to those levels so they short with infinite amounts of leverage and Again, that's where I speak about the clouds of liquidity where all the orders that exist in a all the orders that exist within a market are one side or are generally concentrated to the top side if it's a short in this case. And the orders will be concentrated at the bottom of a market if the longs are bigger than the shorts in terms of the percentage. But in this case, people are looking to sell gold. And this was the screenshot that I had taken on Friday as well. And you could see they are obviously different to each other. This one is bullish and this one is bearish. You can already see where the money is sitting in the gold market, specifically on Thursday and Friday, guys. So it's not necessarily for the whole long term because this does fluctuate a lot. So let's just get into some of the trades that I had taken on Thursday. So as the New York session kicks in at around 2 o'clock, or it could be around 3 o'clock in South Africa, but as that volume kicks in, you get better setups or you get better impulse correction trades that I normally speak about a lot, and I've even made a post about it. You get a better understanding of but of what is happening when you actually trade in the most volatile time of the day, which is the New York session, where there's also an overlapping of the London session and the New York session as well, where that volume kicks in, and that's when there's a lot of buying and selling. However, gold, like I said, has been proven to go long over time. So what had happened was something that most people, in fact, I would argue myself that I didn't really anticipate gold to actually expand the way it did on Thursday and Friday. However... If you keep on doing the same thing over a period of time, you're going to put yourself in a situation where if you take 10 trades, two out of those 10 trades are going to blow up and they're going to absolutely give you an insane reward. And the other eight trades are probably going to give you a, a, a small reward. Most of them are probably going to be like break evens, maybe even a loss now and then. But it's mostly like 20% of your trades. If you, let's just say you take 10 trades or you take a, a certain amount of trades, you're going to find that it's a small percentage of trades that will absolutely explode and give you an insane reward if you keep on following the same rules over and over and over again, right? And 
as I speak about this all the time, there was an impulse and the moving lines or the moving average line supported the notion of this pair going long. It started to expand. It was a little bit of a breakdown and it started to expand again without returning to this area over here. So I decided to buy in the anticipation of price exploding or even expanding higher than this swing high over here, which is what happened. And as you can see, it started to expand even higher and it started to expand even higher. So this was about 23 and it expanded to about 25 to about 2525 and then it expanded further, which again on this one minute time frame, that is where that cloud of liquidity existed existed but however it exists on all time frames and obviously if you get to see every single time frame if you look at different time frames you will see where orders are getting in and you'll understand how those orders are influencing that market and you'll understand what is going to happen over a bigger um time frame or a bigger time in terms of two months three months maybe even weeks versus what is happening on that minute or or that hour because it, it's very important to understand that that is how these trades or that's how I get these trades it's just the notion of if there is a if there is a situation where supply comes in so let's just say it's accumulated it's accumulated and then it breaks down so this is the point where supply comes in that's where people are selling and then the demand that came in over here which as you can see, price never returned to this area. This demand over here overpowered this supply over here. And that's basically an indication that buying has overtaken this market on this time frame. So that's why I put in that entry. And as you can see, that demand overpowered that supply over here. It moved even further. And that's exactly what I mean by that. Let's go to the next slide. And as you can see, I think this is the same trade. It went even further. It went to 25.32. And this is also one of the things that I do. I like going on Telegram and looking at signal groups because they, they tend to give signals in times where moments where markets explode and for weeks where a price action would range in the same price range. And then it would start to deliver in that given trend and they would give signals that are the opposite of that trend. So if it's if it goes lower, right, if it starts, if it's like going sideways and backwards and then the trend starts to go lower, right, they would give buy signals. And in that moment in time, there is no sign of any sort of buying. It will just continue going lower and lower and lower and lower. But in this case with gold, it continued to go even higher and higher and higher because I've said so many times now, gold has been going higher and higher for like the last few months now. So even if you look to sell, just make sure that your sales are not, do not sell with infinite amounts of leverage. In fact, you never should be trading with infinite amounts of leverage. You should always be putting stop losses and stuff, but people still trade like that. And one thing that happens to them is that, yes, they make money in the short term, but if you had to leave that order for months let's just say if you had to buy in that same price range that they had bought and you had to sell in that same price range that they had sold let's just say they've got two orders right one's a buy and one's a sell on the same price point let me not say price range price point you will find that if the context is going long the buy order will be more successful or there's a higher probability that the buy order is going to be in profits for a longer period of time than the sell order because over a period of time the price is showing you that it's going higher and higher and higher and higher and higher and in this moment in time you could see from the signal that he said to about 13,000 people and keep in mind guys it's it's not it's not it doesn't have to be exactly 13,000 people that are trading obviously there's millions of people that are trading the point that I'm trying to say to you is that these schools of thought influence a lot of people. It's about influence. So there's there's probably people that are not on this group that also think the same way. And that's why you'll find situations where, or you'll find stats where people would say 80% of traders, they lose money on the in their first year or 
78% of traders are not successful. It's because 78% of traders, well, there's a, there's a multitudinous reasons for that, but 78 to 80% of traders lose money doing CFDs. It's because of things like this as well, where they, they do not understand or they cannot gauge when things like this happen. This happens because it's a continuation from where prices came from. This is nothing more than just a continuation. It's, 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 it's telling you that money has accumulated itself for a very long time and it wants to take itself even higher. But there are moments in times where people are looking to short or looking to sell in areas where they're not supposed to be selling. And those sell orders that they put, like 25, 26, 29. So let's go 25, let's go 25, 26. So it's around year probably and around year. So in this area, he was looking to sell. And as you can see, it correlates with this swing high over year. That's the last point where the price went and it dropped from that price or from that point. And now the prices came back in that area. And what he is saying is that if the prices come in this area, you must look to sell and look at what happened. Absolutely got destroyed as normal. And the other thing that I want to mention as well is that 78 to 80 percent of traders also don't make money it's because 78 to 80 percent of traders are looking to make copious amounts of money in the first year, which if that was the case, then why aren't they doing that with um, being a musician or being a or, or, or doing that at their job? Like, why? Why is it any different in trading? It's it's no this skill is no different to riding a bike, learning how to play piano, learning how to drive. I mean, even driving is a skill. Like most people think that driving is like your priorities and stuff. No, some people are just meant to take public transport for the rest of their lives. That's my opinion. Some people are not even meant to be driving as much as it's 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 crazy to you. It's crazy to some of you guys uh, that I'm saying that, but I generally believe that's the case though. But the overall point is that that's what trading is. It's a skill. It's something that people don't understand that, listen, you can make millions, but it's it's going to take a very, very, very long time for you to do that. And it's moments like that where people don't understand that things that happen, like these explosions and these expansions are due to the clouds of liquidity that exist above these points where people are looking to sell. And that is where the true money is. And as we as we saw at the beginning of the presentation, you can see that 77%, 77% of people are looking to go short on this thing. And it went higher, actually. It never went lower. So that it means that all these orders over here are getting liquidated. All these orders, they, they're getting destroyed. People are losing money on some time frame. People have probably blown their accounts. There's hedge funds who have probably lost money. There's a rich dude in Saudi Arabia who's probably lost money. There's, there's, a, there's a millionaire somewhere who's probably blown his account. There's someone out there who has blown their account on this asset. And they've probably blown their account on moves like this. It's because they don't understand that moments like this, happen because of those same orders that exist above and this is exactly what i wanted to explain further or on the next slide but let me just finish with the trades that i've taken right so again right so these are also the second round of trades that i had taken it's the same concept over and over again there's a bit of an impulse as you can see the first trade was around 23 so that trade was at this price point i had partialed out on that trade at about what i think it was 90 or 900 points so about nine so multiply that by that what what was the lot size it was 0, 0, 0,011 so multiply that by 11 so multiply nine dollars by 11 that's that's how much on that trade was 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 done and this one is obviously 0, 0,01 i just put back on the risk because Again, I wasn't really sure that expansions like this or what happened on Thursday was going to happen. But as I said, if you keep on doing the same thing over and over again, you're likely going to put yourself in a situation where if those expansions happen, you're going to be in it and you're going to milk, you know, take your edge out of those expansions. You know, milk the market, as people say, you know, take your edge out of that price action. 
and yeah, I was fortunate to be in it. I I actually I, I bought at twenty nine and it went all the way to forty nine. So twenty dollars worth of movement and multiply that by ten because it's zero comma um one. That's the lot size and that there there's there's the the profit made on that. So again, it's the same thing where you can see there is a accumulation and there's fractal ones. I don't know if you guys notice that there's there's fractal ones where this thing over here looks exactly the same as this over here where there's a moment where supply comes in and this one actually moved i think 100 pips or yeah it moved about a thousand points rather and it's still the same point over here right the the supply came and it took price down for a moment demand came in the price never came back to this area it actually overpowered these sellers the same thing happened the same thing happened over here the same thing happened fractally over here if you go on a 15 second time frame and the same thing is happening over here even further on when it expanded beyond the 2541 it went to 2549 you could see it the same thing in impulse there's a bit of a correction supply came in demand comes in overpowers the supply right there's supply, supply comes in, pushes it down, demand comes in, the demand overpowers this supply. Same thing happens. Supply comes in, demand comes in, it gets overpowered. And this is another fractal version of what you're seeing over here. This was over here, you're probably seeing the same thing on a 15 second time frame. Supply comes in on that time frame, demand comes in. You've got demand coming in on a 15 second and you've got demand coming in on a one minute. So there's orders that are coming in and there are different time frames that are showing you those orders coming in. So on a 15 second time frame, you're seeing buy orders or you're seeing demand come in. And then on a one minute, you're seeing demand come in. On a 30 minute, you're seeing demand come in. On a 15 minute, you're seeing demand come in. So overall, you're seeing a big load of demand coming in and overpowering any single person that is looking to sell. And what do you know? Prices continue to move away and they continue to overpower each and every single point where people were looking to sell, or where people were looking to get short. And that's where the cloud of liquidity on repeat happens over and over again. And that's when you get explosive moves like this. That's where you get that's when you get these types of moves that happen where you get these expansions you get these explosive moves where it will absolutely expand and in that expansion somewhere on some time frame people are looking to sell in those moments where you could see that they, they, they are looking to sell in moments where prices would pull back like this and they're looking to get short if the price returns to those areas and what do you know it just continues and they get liquidated or hits, it hits their stop loss or they lose money on some certain time frame, right? So let's just continue to the next slide. So this was actually one thing that I wanted to explain as well is just the clause of liquidity reinforced, uh, reinforced again. I think I've re reinforced it quite a bit. They've, I've made some videos on this. I've been making videos about this since the beginning of the year. Like there's the Don's mindset I've made um, a video explaining the same thing that happened on gold in March. The same thing happened, I think, around July. The same thing happened in August. And the same thing happened two or three days ago. So if you actually start to see, right, I know I keep making videos about this all the time, but it'll get to a point where, like, you guys just need to do this yourselves if you want to trade, right? You will start to see the same things happen over and over and over again where there will be moments in time where you probably won't touch a market and then there'll be moments in time where it will start to expand like what happened on Thursday and Friday on gold and on any other um, assets. It will expand like this and moments like this is where people will start to look for, you know, you get a situation where this is what's happening and then that expansion happens, right? So moments like this that happen or that occur, people, like I've said, will anticipate a bit of a pullback 
to then take prices higher or they just anticipate that prices are high enough so they will no longer continue expanding expanding how it did right however the one thing that people cannot fathom is the continuation from there they cannot fathom that prices is likely to actually do this then it then it is to do this and then expand or do this so let me actually draw this properly again so let's just draw a situation where a market has accumulated it's proven to go long and then it breaks down it starts to go long again then it breaks down it breaks down even further and then it starts to accumulate it breaks down even further it starts to accumulate it breaks down the fourth time so then you could see that people will start to look at these highs over here as some interest of selling right so then what happens is that you'll get situations where it'll return to these areas there's a moment where it pushes back and then boom which is exactly what happened over here there were people that were looking to sell over here to sell over here to sell over here to sell over here to sell in these areas somewhere down here even when it started to expand they looked to get short or look to sell in these areas over here and what happens is that that's where the money is that's where liquidity gets generated and what is likely to happen is let me change the color right what is likely to happen when this happens is is the the continuation from there instead of a pullback right and then continuing or a straight up pullback this up this option right here this is more likely than this and this because if these two happen then that means that that demand that came in over here was not strong enough because how demand shows itself and how it wants to get involved it will present itself and prove itself to you by moving away from that area in which it got involved in and not returning there because if it had to return there then that means that there was supply that made price return to that area that would show you that that demand that came in was not strong enough because if demand is genuine and if something is really strong enough it will it will move away something doesn't just come in to then take prices even lower like there's a there's a interest in that area where something has gotten involved and your job and your understanding as a trader is to look for moments on a lower time frame to get involved which again is those impulse correction moves that happen where it impulses there's a bit of a pause or a bit of a pullback and when prices or when demand comes back in again you buy you potentially buy and you protect the the low or you maybe will do it maybe two dollars below depending on whatever management style you have but you take the trade in the anticipation that the price has proven to you that it is accumulated or it has accumulated now you want that accumulation to overpower this point over here you want it to overpower that selling that came in over here because it's proven to you that it's going it's going higher and higher and higher and higher and higher so to stay with that money you obviously want to find opportunities like this to go with that money and this is when you'll find that situation where look at look at at the price so 2915 and if you look at the so this was about what 346 and this was at 3 o'clock so this was like almost 30 40 minutes later notice how the price when i bought over here it went it came back and it went but it never went back to 29 it only went back to 31 so that means that that demand that came in over here was genuine because it came in and it never returned to this area over here. It just continued. And that is how this demand that came over here in and around this area over here, that's how it's going to validate itself. That's how it's going to show you that 
I want to go long. That's how a market shows you that I'm going to continue to go higher if I want to go higher and vice versa if it's a sell, right? But in this situation, we're talking about bullishness, right? So that's how this demand is going to validate itself. It's going to move away from this area. It's going to move away from a point where money came in and it's not going to come back there for a while, for a very, very long time. So that's, that's, that's the one thing that people cannot fathom. And what do you know? That's exactly what happened. It, it, it was at 32. Now it's at 49. And this is obviously on a 30-minute time frame, as you can see over here. And all those other trades and those positions are on a one minute time frame because that's the time frame of entry that I enter on. And you can see like it 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 never returned to these areas where people were looking to get short, sorry. It never returned. It absolutely just continued to explode. You can see that there is an accumulation that happened here. It broke down. There was some red news that day. It started to accumulate again, break down, started to accumulate again broke down, started to go sideways and backwards, and then boom. And you have you find that these situations happen out of nowhere. You'll you 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 cannot tell when they happen. The only thing that you can anticipate is you have to have a general understanding or a fundamental understanding about what a market is doing. And for months now, I've made videos about it, like I've said, I've had an understanding that gold has been going up and up and up and up and up for the whole year now, for the whole of 2024. So overall, what is gold likely to do? Is it likely to go higher, make, you know, break the all-time highs for the millionth time this year, for hundreds of times this year, like it's broken the all-time high, or is it going to go short? And most people believe that when prices expand like this, they believe that prices are too high, it needs to come back, to then go higher or it just needs to come back. But even if they are right, where some people think that prices are going to continue, they're looking to sell to buy, which is incorrect. Looking to sell to buy is what's going to make you be the liquidity that's going to get liquidated or that's going to get destroyed by moves like this. Instead, you should just be focusing on one area, which is buying, if it's in this situation. You should be looking for opportunities to take this price longer because it's proven to you that it wants to go higher. So follow it. That's that's simply my message from this video. It's, it's, it's that. It's, it's these these types of moves happen. They're, they're very potent when you get a situation where it starts to accumulate and then it'll break down and then it starts to accumulate again and there's a breakdown. It'll start to go sideways and backwards. And in these points, I'm not sure if you guys can actually see this. Like, notice how this high is really these these two highs of a year they are relatively equal to each other so what does that induce what 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 does that feed to retail traders that this is a resistance area and this is where that notion of cloud of liquidity exists is because like i've said before there are people in the other video that i made about clouds of liquidity there are there are three schools of thought but there are people who have gotten involved and they are in profit at, at the moment in terms of their sales. So there are people that are looking to sell and they are already involved. And then there's people that are not involved, but they are looking to get involved in sales. And these are the people that are over here. And these are the people that are waiting for prices to go back to those areas to get involved, to sell in. And what happens is that those combinations of people, they end up getting destroyed in moves like this, where prices never went lower this is what they were anticipating around the 12th of september half past two this was what they were anticipating they were anticipating that prices will come back to these areas of a year where moments in time where prices were equal in these areas and they were anticipating for that sell-off but instead what happened is that it continued to expand and explode and they're left wondering what how could this be you know it's because of the same things I keep speaking about all the time, guys. Like, it's it's understanding that once a trend is in motion, it's most likely going to remain in motion, and it will prove to you that it wants to do something else through a numerous amount of breakdowns, through a numerous amount of, of you know, sideways action. 
where it'll go through a longer term stage one, where it will be in the same range for a long period of time. But judging from the fact that there's a lot of global political tension, there's an election coming up, there's interest rate hikes, there's all sorts of things happening in the world. There's more people that are buying gold than ever. That's why it's continuously making all time highs. So I, I, I doubt that gold is going to decrease in price for a very long time. And even if that does happen on a bigger time frame, that will probably, it, it will be a bigger time frame reaccumulation to then take prices even higher. Because that's how markets work, you know. Once it's proven to go higher and higher and higher and higher, right, it's, it's making highs, it's going higher, there's a breakdown, right? This breakdown happens. And then in this moment in time, people think that, no, this is a time to sell, right? And again, like I've said so many times, that is where this point of a year or that is where clouds of liquidity will start to be engineered. And that's where real money will start to engineer itself. And what will happen is that this is nothing more than just a reaccumulation. That's something that you just need to assume if it is going higher, right? And obviously, it's going to be vice versa if it's going lower. This will be a redistribution if it's going lower. So prices will just potentially slowly take itself further. And that's 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 what happens. And and in situations where you find explosions, I feel I feel like I'm repeating myself, but I'll say this for the, the last time. In situations where you find that it goes side it goes up, it goes sideways, then it goes up again, then it goes down, then it goes sideways, it goes down, right? In situations like this, this 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 type of price action where it's in a range, it's not moving up or down. That's the type of price action where people are, are are looking to buy and sell. So that's like buyers are getting involved, sellers are getting involved, and there's an equilibrium. And what actually happens is that it's obviously going to go higher because this action right here, it came from a an accumulation point. So it was accumulating, it was going higher and higher and higher, and then it stopped, it paused. In that moment on time when it pauses, that's where people are saying to themselves, okay, the price is high enough now. Maybe it's time to sell. So that's when you will get situations like, you know, where people are looking at this. They're looking at these swing highs and they, they're saying that, okay, these are relatively equal. So we're looking for the sells if prices had to return to these areas. And that's when you'll get situations where it will come down, it will return to that area, and then boom, you get explosions like this. So yes, I think I'm going to end it there. Hopefully you guys understand what I'm talking about, but that's just what happened on gold and any other assets. I think it happened on NASDAQ. It happened on well, um, the the US, uh, US 30, the Wall Street Index. It happened on some cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin. Forex pairs, not so much, but overall, if you actually understand how markets function, it doesn't matter if it's gold, Forex pairs, um, crypto stocks they all move the same way they, the, the nature at which price moves is the same and if you can actually just look at the nature of price instead of fixating about the name of the price you'll actually understand that the same things happen over and over again and it's not about waiting or it's not about it's not about knowing actually it is about waiting but it's not about knowing when it's going to happen you don't know when it's going to happen you just need to understand that when it happens you understand that okay this is this is it you know it's it's one of those things where like you need to know tomorrow's news today you need to you need to be within the within that's within you need to just anticipate it you need to understand that on on a fundamental basis this asset what i'm looking at this market that i'm looking at it wants to go higher right so if it if it's proven to you over time like with the sentiment that i have right if it's proven to you that over a big period of time that gold i'm going to use gold in this in the example right it's proven to you for a very long time now that it's going higher and higher and higher and it's been like this for six seven months now so in moments where you want to look for buys right and i'm not saying you shouldn't sell but just understand that if you do sell those sell orders are not going to be if you had to hold those sell orders they're not going to be in profit long term 
Whereas if you were buying, the chances of the buy orders being in profit long term or the probability of those buy trades being su successful is going to be a lot higher than the sell orders. That's what that means, guys. That's what it means. So this has been proven to go higher and higher and higher for a very long time. So in moments and times where you see action like this and it's doing this for like two weeks, three weeks, because sometimes it takes weeks. Sometimes it can even take a month where a symbol is doing nothing, but then you look at this and it's like, but it's going higher, but it's not going higher. Yes, just because it's green, it doesn't mean that prices are going to go higher forever. There's going to be moments where it will pause and it will go sideways and backwards, or it looks like it's going to go short, but you just understand that that is just nothing more than a breakdown to then take prices even higher. And then when that moment comes where that explosion happens, you in your mind are like, aha, now the money has come in. Because you understand that there are going to be moments in time where big money presents itself in these ways. These are basically footprints that present themselves. And you understand that, okay, money or big money has presented itself on this time frame. So what is the probability that this money is just going to disappear overnight and take itself lower? It's not really it's not really high at all. It's 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 a very low probability that it's just gonna go down because it's shown you that I'm I'm interested in this price point. I've been going sideways and backwards for a very long time and I've continued to move away from that area. So I've proven to you that I'm here. It's like someone comes in your house and you know that they were there, you know, just by I don't know. The, the way they leave things on the bed or the way they make the bed. You know, when you have a visitor at your house, they do things that you know that you don't do. And there's a way that they do it, you know. And then you just you just know that, okay, this person is here, you know. That's what big money does. It, it leaves footprints and it's on you to recognize these footprints. It's on you to recognize these moments that when these types of moves happen, when these explosions happen, you'll understand that this is just big money coming in. And what you do is you take your, your edge out of it on lower time frames and you ride it to the moon until the money decides that, okay, I want to stop, you know. And it will do that by breaking down again and it will go sideways and backwards. And then in a few days or a few weeks or a few months time, it'll present itself again. And then it's on you to understand that it, the money is just there. It's, 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 it's telling you that I want to go higher and higher and higher and it's on you to grasp that so yeah that's 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 what i mean but anyway guys if you've gotten this far um thank you so much i really appreciate it and yeah cheers guys